uh, your fundamental interactions, right, uh, which are of four kinds. And then uh, we went on to talk about your conserved quantities, which were your universal conserved quantities and approximate conserved quantities, right. So we have covered all of that. Now we come into the another part, which is your quark models, right. So we said that our particles, they are divided into uh, two branches, one is leptons and the other one is your hadrons, right. So leptons being your elementary particles, they do not have any quarks on them. They are then leptons are themselves elementary, so they do not have any quarks. I mean, they are not made up of quarks, right? So whereas hadrons, they are made up of particles, constituent particles, which are called quarks. So hadrons, there are two types, baryons and mesons. So this is based on their quark composition. So baryons, they are either made up of three quarks or three antiquarks. Whereas your mesons, they are made up of quarks and antiquarks, right? Okay. So let us see the different kinds of quarks. So the different kinds of quarks are, we have six uh, different types or we also call them as six flavors. So which is up, down, charm, strangeness, I mean the strange, top and beauty, right? So these quarks, they are all fermions, right? So they are spin half. And so all of these they have spin half and q. So their charge is given by so they have fractional charge. So this is e in units of e. So u and d they have two third e and d will have minus one third e, right? So I mean the pattern is also like quite clear here. It's two third e minus one third e, two third e minus one third e. So that way, right? Okay, so that means U, C and T, they have plus 2 third E and D, S and B, they have minus 1 third E. And all of them, they are, they have barrier number as 1 third. Okay, now coming to strangeness, all the other quarks, their strangeness number is 0, but for strange quark, its strangeness value is minus 1. Similarly, the charmness for your charm quark is plus 1 and and for the remaining, the charm, uh, the remaining quark, the charmness is zero. The bottomness is minus one for the bottom quark, and the topness is uh, topness is one for your top top quark. Okay. Now, so based on the quark composition, let us see the different kinds of particles. I mean, so we have your what is called as the eight. Full part. So first, so on that, first let us see baryon decouplets whose angular momentum value is given by 3 by 2, right? So, so the important thing to remember here is the steps in which the particles occur. What I mean by that is, so in the first step we see the deltas, right? In the second step we see the sigmas. The third step we have the cascade and the last step we have the omega, right? So this is the inverted pyramid. If you know the sequence of the particles, so then that is uh, more or less enough to get you through most of the I mean, problems where the quark composition is asked, okay? So now the uh, idea is, so this is delta plus plus. So you see that the first line they have the members in your delta family which is 4 in number, right? The quark composition is u, 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 right? Triple u. And when we move in this direction, 1 u decreases, I mean u decreases whereas d increases, right? So that meaning you have your u, u, d here. So similarly, you have your u, d, d and d, d, d. So now when you go down, your s increases, right? So you will have u, u, s. So one s increases, whereas here you have u, so again this side, because I am coming this side, my d should increase, hence this, right, and this is given by d, d, s. So I am moving further down, 
So meaning I should have 1 u and 2 s and this u because I am moving towards my left it should be replaced by 1 d. Right? So now I am moving further down that simply meaning I have 3 s here. So that means if I know this layer in which my particles occur I and mean the, the deltas belong to the top one, the sigmas belong to the second one and the cascade belong to the third one. So if I know that way then more or less I can figure out the core composition of each of these right. Okay. So now let us see. Uh, now we, uh, we can also say that okay one thing to remember here is these sigmas and cascades here are the resonance okay so these are the resonance particles and from here only I can draw for your baryon octets as well mm. okay. first let me do this so if you see here the charge of the charge here is 2 in this line the charge is 2 in this line my charge is 1 right so this has charge 1, this has charge 1. In this line, the whole of it, my charge is 2. In this line, my charge is Q equals to 0. And in this line, the whole of it, I see a minus charge, right? So the whole of it, my charge Q is minus one, right? So Q is equals to 2, 1, 0 and minus 1. So the charge is given this way. Okay. Now if I want to see the strangeness value, my strangeness value is given as, for instance, here I do not see any strange uh, quantum number, I mean the strange particles, right? So my strangeness is given by 0 here. I see one string S. So, and I know that from that table which I have drawn here, my S is 1 S means 1 minus 1, right? In whole of this, the whole of this line has 1 S, right? So, it is all of them have strangeness minus 1. And uh, this is my cascade. They have two strangeness particles, which is given by. So here I have two strangeness particles, so that means my this is 2 and whereas, okay, let me put it here for this omega minus, I see 3s, so 3 minus 1, so that gives me s equals to minus 3, right? So this is how it appears, okay. Now, if you all remember, we had something called uh, hypercharge, right? And this hypercharge is given by 2 times the average charge of the multiplets, right? So for whole of this, if you calculate, my hypercharge is going to be 1. So the whole of this hypercharge is 1. In whole of this, my hypercharge is 0. Right? Here, it is minus 1. Right? So that way. Okay, now if I look on, uh, I can also calculate my I3 values, I mean I can make out I3 values from here. So because these are folding numbers and I know that when my multiplicity is 4, my I is 3 by 2 and the I3s they are assigned as plus 3 by 2. So here my I3 is plus 3 by 2, I3 is plus half, here for this my I3 is minus half and for this my I3 is minus 3 by 2, right, okay. Now also you can 
see that these are the three particles, right? So for these are uh, three in number, and hence their multiplicity is three. And because of that, I can assign them my i three values as. Okay, so this is i three is plus one. This here, my i three is zero, and here my i three is minus one, right? And similarly here for these two particles, again my i three is plus half. See here, we all follow the straight line. So i three is plus half. From here also I can make out, and here also i three is uh, minus half, right? And whereas for this I just said that i three is zero. So because it follows the straight line, so here also my i three value is zero, right? Okay. So now if I simply rub this all. So I'm just giving you an idea about your. So what we have done now is your baryon decuplet. So next is your baryon octet, right? Which is given over GP. I mean uh, the angular momentum and P stands for your parent is given by half plus. So I had this kind of. I mean, this is not the baryon octet. This is oh, I'm redrawing your baryon decuplet again, right? You had something like this, and then you had your deltas here, you had your uh, deltas, uh, sigmas, you had your cascade here, and then you had your uh, omega here, right? Now, when you're doing the decuplet, you can just rub off this part. This does not look that symmetric. You can rub off the extra parts. Right? So you are left with this, and this is your barrier octet. Where again, like how you have your deltas here, right? You had your deltas here in your decuplets. So instead of deltas, you have now your proton and neutron. Here you had your sigmas, but they were the resonances. Now you will just have your sigma, sigmas. These are the particles, sigma b and sigma plus. And then at the end, you have your sigmas. And then in that decuplet, you had your cascade. So let me just run the cascade. And the quark composition is the same like your decoupling. So at this position, if I'm not wrong, it, it was U U D, and here it was U D D, right? And then here it was triple U, so it decreases to U U S. So it's given like the strategy is the same. The quantum numbers will also be given by the same strategy. And similarly, you can also be doing for your um, meson octets and your vector meson octet. So this is how your eightfold part can be understood, which will help you in um, identifying the various quark composition of different particles. The only thing you need to keep in mind is to see in which layer of the uh, what do I say? I mean, in which layer. Of the your um, of your pyramid or your what is this? Uh, your hexagon, the particles fall right. So in the first one it was your delta, second is your sigma, third is your cascade, and at the end you have omega. If you remember that, more or less things are fine, right? So for instance, in when you have your so this is what I did for your baryons. So in your meson octet and vector meson octet, what you have is your you have your k plus here, you have your k zero here, right? And then you have your k zero bar. Here you have your k star bar, um, degree minus bar, and then uh, you will have your 
phi eight minus phi zero and phi plus. And again, okay. And now because these are mesons, it's going to be given by u. Uh, it is strange. So u s bar. And the, again, the strategy is same. You go towards your uh, left. U minus. I mean, uh, your u decreases and your d increases, right? You go to, uh, you move towards your right. The reverse happens when you go down. Your s increases. 